and you're watching The Never Show, where we hate that copper thing, but we got to do what we got to do to bring you a movie review. Hey, how's it going, YouTube friends? It's me, your one fuzzy boy, Never. Back at you again, eternally scarred in the world, why dick with the world gone crazy? So you need escapes. My show is here for you. Yes, it is the only show with lemon-scented limes, lest I forget, and the only show with a supernatural, super awesome. Third Eye. I know this joke is bad, but if you did, laugh. Yeah. Then thank you. It's Wednesday again. At least I hope it is. My schedule is a bit of a mess this week. So uh, thank you for clicking that subscribe button and that little bell icon and coming and finding me. I know things are not perfect here on YouTube, but we thank you for coming and finding us. With that said, time for a movie review. And today's movie is Dune. Dune Part 1, anyway. It's a PG-13 movie. It's two hours and 35 minutes. Might want to go easy on things. At least it's not the original Dune. That crammed the whole book into a two-hour and 17-minute movie. It's from director Dennis Villeneuve, who directed this. He's the guy from Blade Runner 20-something or other, the latest one. Uh, John Spritz write this. Dennis Villeneuve did the screenplay along with Eric Roth based on the works of Frank Hibbert, the novel Dune. Uh, I never have gotten around to reading that. Timothy Clement, Rebecca Ferguson, and Zandiria, if I'm pronouncing her name right, are the three main characters you really need to know this. Josh Brolin's in this. Skelton Scargill's in this. Quite a few other names. Oh my gosh, I could go all day just on the pedigree that this film has, but you didn't come here for that. Our production companies were Warner Brothers, Legendary Entertainment, Villeneuve Films, our distributor here in the good old United States of America. God bless America. Land that I love was Warner Brothers and HBO Max. Special effects were done by FBFX, WRKSHIP. Ironhead Studios, Clear Angle, Double Negative, Wiley VFX, Rodeo VFX, Gentle Giant Studios, Third Floor, Digital Domain, Light Archives, God, there's so many of these people in here, Scan Truck, Disc Magic, Track VFX, Roto Maker, Moving Pic and the Moving Picture Company is in this. Quite a mouthful for a film with this scope. Villanovo is known for this. <laughs> and he pushes effects companies to their limits. And I can see why there's so many here. And I would say that too many effects spoils the ship, but I feel like they did a good job here. So let's get into my thoughts on the film. Uh, I like it. I'm not, I, I remember the 1984 Dune. I still haven't ever finished watching that film. <laughs> it's at, you know, one hour and say 15 something minutes in. And every time I try to finish it, I fall asleep. This has lost all the tropes and nonsense that the original film had. That whole talking voiceover thingy that they were doing while people st stood around. Long gone is that. And I am very, very pleased with that. It does make the film a little more, wa little more watchable. And I was more engaged in the story this time. John Sparissis and Dennis Villeneuve, along with Eric Roth, I feel like really took Frank Hibbert's work and translated it to screen. So I'm actually curious what the sequel is going to be. I know that we're late to this. I know that Dune came out in October. I'm sorry. It just is what it is. I do want to see what CinemaSense thinks, just because I am curious because there's a little bit of like, 
narration and over narration and kind of backstory stuff that I feel like one, um, the casual watcher is going to be a little confused at first, but I feel like Vinanuvu did a really good John job on this. And I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing his name. I'm very bad with surnames. It is a basic comedy of this channel that I mispronounce surnames. And if you want to see how bad I can get, um, there's Hardcore Henry, which I will put the link somewhere somewhere for this. I I'm curious where, where they're going to go with this. And I hope that, you know, Warner Brothers doesn't kill this as a sequel. I could see this being a very much Lord of the Rings trilogy. The sound is beautiful, and I am intrigued by the sound choices and everything they've done here. The special effects are wonderful, and I just, even though I didn't understand the full scope of what was going on, it was intriguing enough that it kept me hooked, and visually intriguing enough. Unlike the first movie, which was, you know, ugh. I feel like this is a definite TV watch. I will want to see this as a DVD buy when the second film comes out. I definitely see this as a pass on a theater watch just because I don't want to. I know this is going to be saturated in the market as soon as it gets to TV. Especially when the second film is about to come out for certain. I feel like this is as much justice as I'm going to give this film, and I feel like I've given it an honest review. What do you think? Tell me in the comments. With that said, if you like what you see in here, make sure you hit that like button. Likes and views are how YouTube works now. It's not the way I like it. It's just the way it is. Remember, all comments are 100% guaranteed response. Your comments are the highlight of my day. I love responding to them. Please fill the comments. Please fill the comment section of this video with as much as you want to say about this, or if you want me to review other films. And you know I have to ask. I have an Amazon. I have a Patreon. It is not without your support that keeps this channel afloat. Thank you for your donations this year. They have really helped, and I don't know how I do it without you. Thank you for supporting me, and thank you for supporting my American dream. And with all that said, for a final time, if you want to see more of this nonsense, make sure you hit that subscribe button and that little bell icon. Every time a bell rings, an angel gets its wings. And I will see you all in the next movie review. Bye!